Welcome to Tuesday Talks with Shawnee Alliance Church. It is our desire to invite you into conversations about the life topics and questions we all face. Wherever you are in your faith journey, we invite you to explore the freedom found in a transformed life. Well, Shawnee Lions Church, we are here. Another great episode that we have prepared for you. My name is Zach. I am the communications director here, and I am joined today with my good, good friend, Riley Graham. Yes, <laughs> Riley Graham, a, a, a friend of mine. Man, we've known each other for how long now? Uh, it's been a while since your senior year of high school. Yeah, it's been at least like nine years. Like maybe eight, maybe eight, eight, eight or nine years. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited when you get uh, two bros to just sit down and talk about Jesus. You know, who knows what's going to happen? So, exactly. uh, Riley, where uh, where do you work? Where where are you at? Uh, yeah, I am the head pastor at a church out in Herod, Ohio. Um, if you're from the Lima area, you know that Herod is. Actually, you don't know anything about Herod. Herod's an Alanese. <laughs> really small community. Really great people, though. Uh, I work at Herod Christian Church. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been there? Um, well, I've been there for almost five years, but I've been the pastor for just over a year. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I knew the answer to that, but the people that are listening probably didn't. So uh, yeah, They need to get to know me a little exactly, bit. Exactly. Right. You know, we want we want the people to, to know us, the real us. So uh, today we are talking about uh, something that God's been laying on your heart lately of just about giving God your best. Um, yes. What that looks like, why we do it, how we do it. Um, I guess kind of maybe open up with uh, what sparked this. You know, uh, where where did you land that you were like, man, this is really something that God is impressing on my heart. Well, I mean, I think a lot of things have kind of sparked this season of my life where I'm really trying to focus on giving God my best. Um, I would say one of the first things would be, you know, starting the job as the head pastor at my church. Um, You know this, but other people might not know this. I'm only 26 years old. Um, Same. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I'm just a little bit older than you, though. Two weeks. Um, Who's who's counting? Two weeks more of wisdom. (laughs) Um, Anyways, um, so I'm I'm a pretty young guy, uh, and I've been doing ministry for, you know, quite some time. I started my first year of college doing full-time ministry, but, you know, it's different. It's different doing youth ministry versus pastoring a church. It's different working for a parachurch organization versus working in an actual church. And so I kind of jumped into this. And then two weeks after I started, you know, the COVID pandemic started. So it's kind of like all this stuff is happening all around me. I don't really know what's going on. And then, you know, because, you know, the pandemic was so fresh and new and And nothing like that had ever happened in our lifetime before. Nobody else knew what was going on or what to do either. So, you know, I just kind of had a lot of questions Um, Was and still am very dependent on the Lord to um, show me what to do, show me how to pastor a church. Um, You know, and obviously while I'm there, I want to do a good job. Uh, But sometimes it can feel a little bit overwhelming because, you know, you jump into something that's a little bigger than yourself and then... You're like, well, stink. I don't really know what to do right now. Um, you know, but the Lord impressed upon me to just give him my best, you know, just do the absolute best that I can for him and for the people. Um, and so I think that's kind of what the catalyst was for this subject for me. Um, and it's definitely translated into a lot of other areas of my life as well, you know, especially in my personal life. Um you know, I guess I can start diving right in, but, um, you know, I went through a period of struggling, a lot of struggling. I refer to it as a wilderness period. I was really anxious and depressed. You remember, you were there for a lot of it. I I was Um, there. (laughs) It was a pretty miserable season of my life and it really, really shook me. And 
I don't want to say it shook my faith, but it definitely affected my disciplines, you know, like mm-hmm. reading the word, spending time in prayer. And it took me a very, very long time to bring myself to get back into the word, you know, and I'm not saying, oh, it was God's fault or like it's because the Lord put me in this season. It was just a poor response on my part. But, you know, once I got to the place where I was like, I really need to be in the word, I really need to be in prayer again. And I noticed I had a difficult time. Um, I, had a, I had a difficult time getting back into it. Mm. You know, I used to be really, really disciplined. I used to love to sit down and read the Bible. But then, you know, after struggling for three or four years, it was kind of like, I know I need to do this. I know this is going to be good for me, but I, I can barely focus. I just, I don't feel it, you know. And so I just started focusing on, I'm going to give God my best, you yeah. know. I mean, so, uh, like, already I know that there's got to be, as people are listening to this, they're like, I 100% get it. You know, I mean, we have people uh, from from all kinds of backgrounds that are going to be listening to this and say, wow, like, I went through, like, maybe they didn't know the word, like, a wilder- like a wilderness period, but suddenly, you know, you said it and it made sense. And it's crazy because I, I feel like people often think um, that leaders and pastors in ministry, like— that we don't go through this. I'm just a like, normal guy. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and that's one thing I think that we really try to, to stress here is like we go through some of the same exact things as the, you know, I guess you could say, quote unquote, regular people. Like we are the regular people, yeah. you know, and we've, we've just been, you know, called to a specific, you know, purpose that is in church ministry and church leadership. Um, and so already I, th- I think people are going to be sitting here thinking like, Man, I, I relate to this, and and I've gone like I've gone through periods of that too. So I guess like, what what kind of steps did you take, or what uh, what would you say as somebody is like, I feel like I am currently in that wilderness season, and like you know, I pick up my Bible and I just like the desire is not there. You know, I go to pray and I'm just like is God even listening? You know, are these just bouncing off of my bedroom walls? You know, what would you say to somebody, you know, having been there that if somebody's there currently right now, as as we're talking about giving God our best and you're just like, I'm just trying to give God whatever I I feel like I can. And I don't feel like, you know, and I'm using a lot of terminology like feel because I'm a feeler. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of feelers on this podcast. If you're a thinker out there and you'd be interested, come think away at us. Um, but to me, I, I have this this um, this idea that like what I feel becomes true. And so if I start feeling like God's not listening or I start feeling like my time in the word isn't worth it, it's so hard to do it. So I guess what advice, what practical steps would you give to somebody that's in that part of the wilderness journey? Yeah. Well, you know, practically speaking, the best place to start is just to do it, you know. And so when I got to the place where I recognized that need to be back in the Word and to be in prayer again, um, I didn't just start jumping in and start spending two hours a day in the Word. It was baby steps, you know, like I used to work at a coffee shop and some mornings I would have to be there at like 5 a.m. And it was miserable because I lived 30 minutes away from the coffee shop. So, you know, I would wake up extra early and I would get there and read in my read my Bible in my car for 15 minutes before work because yeah. I was like, I know I need to start somewhere. I know I need to spend some time in the Word throughout the day. And I need, for me anyways, I like to start the day with that, with something like that, because it just kind of sets the tone for the whole day. Um, So I would do that, you know, and then as I got accustomed to reading before work, I would um, leave the Bible app open on my phone. And I had a psalm that I would read through over and over and over again throughout the shift, you know, when Mm -hmm. I would turn my back to the camera so that the manager couldn't see me. (laughs) Um, But, um, and so, I mean, just starting with baby steps and then, you know, obviously we don't stay with the baby steps once we start getting used to that, we then take it a step further. Um, And so for me, moving from I'm just going to start reading before work became, all right, I'm going to make sure that I wake up early enough so that I'm spending a decent amount of time in the Word before I leave the house. Hmm. Um, 
kind of just work your way up there a little bit. Right. So I guess let, let's take a step back, actually, for a second, because, you know, I get into this trap where sometimes I just assume that people understand, like, why they should be doing that. And so as we're, we're thinking about, okay, giving God our best, why? Why should we give God our best? You know, why should we go through these steps of I'm going to if I if it's if it's 10 minutes, OK, I'm going to do it. It's worth it. If it's, you know, especially when we f- aren't feeling it, you know, especially when we get done with that time, where we're like, I don't feel like anything's changed. Answering the question, why is God worthy of our best? I mean, the shortest and quickest answer is he gave us his life. So I think we can afford to give him 10 minutes of our day, mm. you know, not to sound too snarky, but. As a believer, that's something I really take for granted. You know, Christ died on the cross for me. He literally gave up his own life so that I could have freedom, so that I could have a relationship with God. You know, the whole purpose of him dying, you know, obviously he wanted to free us from sin and, you know, give us the opportunity to go to heaven. But it's really about that relationship with God. You know, and how do you have a relationship with somebody? You communicate with them. You, you know, not only do you talk to them, but you listen to what they say. And, you know, God gave us his word so that we could hear what he has to say, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so, you know, why do we give, give God our best? Why is he worthy of our best? I mean, he gave us his life. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that would merit our best. Um You know, and that's something that I had to remind myself of a lot in the beginning, too. And even in my wilderness period, you know, and something that God would remind me of pretty regularly was that he gave his life for me. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's crazy, too, because even even if God hadn't done that, it does not negate his worthiness. Right. You know, and like. Like alone right there, like what you what you've just shared should be enough for us to be like, wow, like God has done this for me. And so the only thing, the only correct response is to like to give my life, you know, to give my best. But even thinking about the fact that at the end of the day, if we if God had not sent his son Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins, he would still be worthy of our praise. Absolutely. Even if. At the end of the day, when we die, we would go to hell. He is still worthy of our praise. And that is, I think that perspective is why, is just a good reason that so many people refuse to even follow Jesus. You know, they, they, it's a, it's, it becomes more of a transactional thing. Um, Okay. What has God done for me? You know, and you, in, in, the answer is, yeah, well, he sent his son, but like, okay, but what has he done in my life at this point when I was at rock bottom and I didn't have any money and, you know, my child got sick and like, where was all of this? And those circumstances don't negate God's worthiness, you know? I mean, even Paul, as you're looking at uh, the New Testament and the books that he wrote and talking about being in prison, uh, you know, and and him and uh, was it him and Silas were like, we're just going to praise God, even though we're in prison, (laughs) you know, and if anybody like in certain moments of scripture had rights to be like, "Mm, I, I just I'm not feeling it. You know, when Joseph is in the pit after his brothers beat him to like a pulp and then threw them and and sold him into slavery. If anybody could have the excuse of I'm not feeling it, (laughs) I feel like it would be guys like him, you know, but we, we press on because we know that God is infinitely worthy. Right. Well, and I think something that makes it difficult to, you know, because we can sit here and we can talk about all this and, you know, we talk about the sacrifice of Christ and how God is worthy. And that's absolutely true. But when you're down in the dumps, when you feel like you're at rock bottom, when you are bitterly, horribly depressed, it's really hard to keep that into perspective. Mm. You know, it's really difficult to um, keep that mindset of, yeah, God is still worthy because it's so real to you, you know, and and having a lot of experience with being depressed, it is a very real thing. You know, I mean, I, we laugh, you'll see 
jokes on the internet where people will say something about it and then, you know, somebody will tell them, oh, just don't be sad. And you're like, okay, that helps. <laughs> you know, and I think sometimes the church can have a tendency to, I don't want to say neglect, because I don't necessarily think that's the right I, I word. think that would be a good term. I mean, but for lack of a, you know, for lack of a better word, neglect um, people who are, are suffering in that way, you know, and they, they give them the Bible and, you know, I'm not to um, contradict myself, but sometimes, you know, like we're saying, your heart's just not in it. And I think a perspective change is necessary, you know, and, and I come across, I also work a lot with teenagers and all the time teenager asking or teenagers ask stuff like, you know, if God loved me, why am I going through A, B, C, D? If God loves me, if God is good, then why is my life so painful? Right. You know, if, if God is supposed to protect me and, you know, well, yeah, God protects us, you know, and we have no idea what all he protects us from. We don't get to see that. But also, I think what we forget so often and what these people forget and what I forgot was that the promise of the gospel isn't in this life. The promise of the gospel is in eternity. Mm. You know, like Paul says in Romans 8, I consider all these sufferings of this life as nothing compared to the glory to be received in the end. And so we get so caught up in these feelings. And you know why we get caught up in those feelings. I mean, obviously, because we're in the midst of it, but also we have an enemy, Satan, who wants us to get caught up in those things and forget the goodness of God. Mm. And we get caught up in all this stuff and we get focused on all this stuff and we lose sight of what we're really living for. You know, because we're living for God, yes, and we want to honor Him in this life, yes, but this is a blip. This is a blip in eternity. Yeah. And so we've got really, really good things coming after we die or the Lord returns. Mm. And it's just, it, it is hard to keep that into focus though. But, you know, once we can start to wrap our minds around that, and once we re remind ourselves of that, I think we'll start to see a lot of change in our own attitudes as we go through seasons of life of struggling. Yeah. I, I often find that the moments that I am most taken back by God is when I watch his people go through things that they have no right to be able to get through and they get through it, you know, yeah. or that, that they experience such hardships that are like, wow, I, like scenarios that are just like, I can't even fathom that this would happen to a human being. And then at the end of the day, they're like, no, I have hope. Like I am, I am transformed by the gospel. And you know, I, the other day I saw it was a comment on a TikTok video uh, that I was watching, and somebody said, "Well, you know, if God is good, why do children have cancer? You know, why do children get cancer?" And I'm like, like it takes you a moment because you're like, wow, like, like I get it. I get why you're struggling through that. But again, just like you said, the promise of the gospel is not that life is going to be great right now and that things are going to be fixed. When Jesus died on the cross and he rose again, it did not fix the consequences of sin. It didn't right. fix the entire earth. You know, it like it gave us a hope that is eternal and is far greater than anything that we could ever imagine. Uh, but we still go through those things. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't make God any less worthy of our best. Right. Well, and, you know, I was reading uh, this morning in John chapter 11, you know, where Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Um, and, you know, just some things that were sticking out to me about that, you know, that are along the lines of what we're talking about today. Um, you know, something that Lazarus is... Um, sister said, you know, Mary and Martha, they said, Lord, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. And I don't think that they said it like in spite or bitterness. I think they were upset that Lazarus was dead, but also recognizing that Christ had the power, you right. know. Um, I feel like they understood that his presence changes things. Right, that his presence changes things. But what really stood out to me was what Jesus said. Um, and I'm paraphrasing it here, um, so forgive me if I butcher it a little bit, you know, before he leaves. Um, but basically what he says is that this isn't going to end in death. This isn't going to end in death, but for the glory of God so that he may be revealed through 
the Son of Man, you know? And I love that phrase, this isn't going to end in death, because you know what that means is that death still came. Yeah. The hardships, the heartaches still came, but it wasn't the end. It wasn't the end by any means. And so even as we're in the midst of these hardships and heartaches and struggles and trials and things happen that don't make sense, that's not the end. And that's why we can give God our best because we know that he's already giving us his best and we know that we're going to receive that best in full in eternity. Hmm. That's a guarantee. Yeah. I I often think about that term, the abundant life. Yeah. You know, and that's that's one of my favorite all time phrases that is used throughout scripture because God promises, you know, when we follow him, when we trust him, that he's not, it's not just about like, I'm going to keep you alive. I'm going to, you know, or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make things like, he says, I'm going to give you an abundant life that is like overflowing. And I think I lose sight of that when I'm like, uh, you know, when I, I start thinking so, um, What's the word? Temporal. Like, I'm thinking about a moment in time right now, what I can see in front of me, and I miss out on, you know, what is to come. And thinking about Jesus and Lazarus when he's like, hey, this isn't going to end in death. Someday we are going to die. But that's not the end, you know. Right. And so even what we do now matters beyond our death. The impact of that, the impact that we can have, not not as pastors, as Christians, as followers of Christ, right. filled with the Holy Spirit, the impact that we can make for the kingdom does not end at a certain point. It will continue on. And so as we're thinking about why do we give God our best, well, I think going back to Scripture, our, our sole end is to glorify God, but also to fulfill the Great Commission. Right. And, and I often find that people are saying, well, I, what do I do? Like, I don't know what God's asking me to do. Well, first of all, yes, you do. There's always, <laughs> exactly. there's always a baseline. Go back to Scripture. What is the one thing that every single person on this earth, their purpose is, is going towards? Fulfilling the Great Commission. To go out, to teach, to preach, to make disciples, to baptize people. Like, that's not just right. the job of a pastor. That's the job of a single mother. That's the job of a, you know, retired grandfather whose wife passed away. That's the job of a kid in high school who is walking around the hallway saying, I don't know where I'm going to go to college. Every single one of us has that. And we give God our best because we're all collectively moving towards this idea of we are bringing hope to a world that desperately needs it. Right. Right. So, you know, as, as we're, you know, we're thinking about this, like, well, I guess kind of, let's go back to to some practicality. What are some ways that you would say that as you've learned, and we've this might be reiterating some things, but repetition is good. Um, right. Some practical ways that you wake up every day and you're saying this this is how I'm going to choose to give God my best. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, practically speaking, I make a point that I I'm going to spend time in God's Word. You know, I, I shoot for every day. And honestly, I don't do it every day. You know, some days I wake up, I have a really busy day ahead of me, and I choose to sleep in. Um, you know, so maybe I don't maybe I don't wake up in the morning, but nine times out of ten, I'll say that I try to come back later and say, no, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to spend some time in the Word. You know, it doesn't have to be anything legalistic. It doesn't have to be some sort of rigid schedule that you stick to where you're like, okay, I'm going to read X amount of chapters from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every day, and that's it. That's giving God my best. No, it's just about spending time with the Lord. You know, that's why I am encouraging and, you know, why we're encouraging to spend time in the Word and spend time in prayer. Um, And, you know, um, being intentional about making sure that I'm hearing truth throughout the day. So I try to listen to a lot more worship music, especially now, Um, even if I'm not paying attention to it, just so that subconsciously I'm hearing that and it's uh, making my mind 
go back to the Lord or um, redeeming other times that I have, you know, on those days, because sometimes you are really busy. You know, I think of people yeah. who are parents, like I don't have kids of my own, but I've taken care of kids before and they're a handful and they're messy <laughs> and gross and like, they're just so much. Props to all the parents uh, out yeah, there. For, for real. real. You guys you guys are doing great. Um, You're out there doing the Lord's work. That's for sure. <laughs> but like, yeah, seriously, you know, and so parents, I know it's probably especially difficult to get quiet time in, you know, because I feel like most of the time kids wake up before their parents do. That's kind of a stereotype that's based in reality. (laughs) Um, And, and, you know, then you've got to take care of your kids. It's like it'd be hard to get some good time with the Lord, especially if you've got really young kids, you know, but like redeem time that you have, you know, when you're alone in the car, you can pray. You know, I used to do that when I was in high school. I would pray on the way to school every morning Mm. and, or you can pray in the shower, you know, or, you know, maybe you have a certain passage of scripture that you want to focus on or read or study throughout the week. And so, you know, print it out or write it out on a piece of paper, put it in a Ziploc bag, hang it up in the shower, read it in there, you know, and, uh, you know, just doing things like that. It doesn't have to be like, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to spend X amount of hours in the Word and in prayer. It's just about, I'm going to try and focus on the Lord. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and take some steps so that I'm spending time with the Lord throughout the day and keeping Him on my mind. And those maybe are just some practical examples that might make it a little bit easier if you're a busy person. Yeah, and, and some of those disciplines definitely, I guess, I think ultimately the goal is Spirit-filled living. Right. Uh, the, the best way to give God our best is to be in tune with the spirit but the best way to do that in my opinion and who am i but you know i'm going to give it anyway is developing those disciplines Absolutely. because as you continue to pray as you continue to spend time in the word as you continue to um you know meet with people that you know are seeking god and you know spending time like you know those people um as you're doing that you are learning and you are growing in that relationship with god and you will learn, you know, there's been times in my life where, yeah, I've, I've been like, I'm going to read 20 chapters of the Bible a day. And this is my goal. I'm going to go for it. And I do it for a little while. And then I usually burn out. Um, but as I continue to do that, I'm starting to think like, okay, you know what? I think the Lord is telling me to slow down yeah. because I'm just trying at, at this point, I'm just trying to get through it. So I'm going to start slowing down, you know, or I might wake up and be like, uh, Lord, I'm reading through Genesis, and I get to the point where I'm just like, oh, man, this is a lot of genealogies. Uh, you know, or you're reading through Leviticus or Numbers, and you're like, okay. And and you just hear that, you know, like, hey, how about James this morning? You know, and in those things, you are learning how to live a spirit-filled life. And in doing so, you're growing in that relationship with God. And the ultimate yield of that is to give God your best. Right. You're giving God your best because you're growing in that relationship with, with him. And in doing so, you are that much more in tune to what he's asking you to do, what he's expecting of right. you. Um, and, and ultimately, yeah, that's what it comes down to is we're giving God our best because he's worthy, whether he sent Jesus to die for us or not, but just because he, you know, who is Alpha and Omega, creator, like right. all those things. Like he is worthy of those things and he desires. That's the thing. It's just, it's just amazing. He desires that relationship with you. And we have the opportunity to dive deeper with that. And there's no point where you just arrive. Right. You know, this doesn't end in death either. Like I, I'm a firm believer that we are never, even when we get to heaven, we're not going to know everything about, like, it's not just like we die, we're in heaven. Now I know everything about God. That's the great journey is we're going to continue to grow in our relationship, deepen in our relationship right. and our understanding of God. And in so we are serving him to the best of our ability with the power of the Holy Spirit as well. Right. So we are getting close to the end of our time. Do you have any last final thoughts as we're wrapping it up today? Uh, Yeah. You know, I'll just, I'll backtrack a little bit and maybe talk about some more practical stuff, Um, you know, just for the thinkers out there um, or maybe the people who don't really know where to start. Um, I like to do chronological Bible plans. Uh, It can kind of be a lot once you get into like Leviticus or Numbers. Um, But I do think that it's really enjoyable. It gives me a better picture of history throughout the Bible. Um, You know, but if that's a little much, start in the Gospels. 
start in the Gospels uh, and look over the life of Jesus and just start there. You know, maybe shoot for a couple chapters a day or, uh, but really just focus on reading and having quality time with the Lord. So my little practical note for you there. Well, that's awesome. Well, Riley, as always, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining Likewise. us today. And we will see you guys on the next episode. 